Lesson number 9 Reproduction in Animals Do you recall the process of digestion, circulation and respiration which you have studied in your previous classes? These processes are essential for the survival of every individual. You have also learned about the process of reproduction in plants. Reproduction is essential for the continuation of species. Imagine what would have happened if organism had not reproduced. You will realize that reproduction is very important as it ensures the continuation of similar kinds of individuals generation after generation. You have already learned in your previous class about reproduction in plants. In this chapter, we shall learn how reproduction takes place in animals. 9.1 Modes of reproduction. Have you seen the young ones of different animals? Try to name some of the young ones by completing table 9.1 shown in examples at S number 1 and 5. You must have seen the young ones of various animals being born. Can you tell how chicks and caterpillars are born? How are kittens and puppies born? Do you think that these young ones look the same they before they were born as they do now? Let us find out. Just as in plants, there are two modes by which animals reproduce. These are sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. 9.2 Sexual Reproduction Try to recall reproduction in plants which you studied in class 7. You remember that plants that reproduce sexually have male and female reproductive parts. Can you name the parts? The In animals also, males and females have different reproductive parts. Parts or organs. Like plants, the reproductive parts in animals also produce gametes that fuse to form a zygote. It is the zygote which develops into a new individual. This type of reproduction, beginning from the fusion of male and female gamete, is called sexual reproduction. Let us find out the reproductive part in humans and study the process of reproduction in them. Male reproductive organs. The male reproductive organ include a pair of testes, two sperm ducts, and a penis. The testes produce the male gamete called sperms. Millions of sperms are produced by the testes. Look at Fig 9.2, which shows the picture of a sperm. Though sperms are very small in size, each has a head, a middle piece, and a tail. Thus, it appears to be a single cell. Indeed, each sperm is a single cell with all the usual cell components. Female reproductive organs. The female reproductive organs are a pair of ovaries, oviducts, and ureters. The ovary produces female gametes called ova. In human beings, a single matured egg is released into the oviduct by one of the ovaries every month. Ureters is the part where development of the baby takes place. Like the sperm, an egg is also a single cell. Fertilization The first step in the process of fertilization is the fusion of a sperm and an ovum. When sperm come in contact with an egg, one of the sperm may get fused with the egg. Such fusion of the egg and the sperm is called fertilization. During fertilization, the nuclei of the sperm and the egg fuse to form a single nucleus. This results in the formation of a fertilized egg or zygote. Did you know that the zygote is the beginning of a new individual? The process of fertilization is the meeting of an egg cell from the mother and a sperm cell from the father. So the new individual inherits some characteristics from the mother and some from the father. Look at your brother or sister. See if you can recognize some characters in them similar to those of your mother or your father. Fertilization which takes place inside the female body is called internal fertilization. Internal fertilization occurs in many animals including human, humans, cows, dogs and hens. You will be surprised to know that in many animals fertilization takes place outside the body of the female. In, the, in these animals fertilization takes place in water. Let us find out how this happens. Activity 9.1. Visit some ponds or slow flowing streams during spring or rainy season. Look out for clusters of rocks, eggs floating in water. Write down the color and size of the egg. During spring or rainy season, frogs and toads move to ponds and slow flowing streams. When the male and female come together in water, the female lays hundreds of eggs. Unlike hens, legs, frogs, egg is not covered by a shell and it is comparatively very delicate. A layer of jelly holds the eggs together and provides protection to the egg. As the eggs are laid, the male deposits sperms over them. 
Each sperm swims randomly in water with the help of its long tail. The sperms come in contact with the egg. This results in fertilization. This type of fertilization in which the fusion of a male and a female gamete takes place outside the body of the female is called external fertilization. It is very common in aquatic animals such as fish, starfish, etc. Development of embryo. Fertilization results in the formation of zygote which begins to develop into an embryo. The zygote divides rapidly to give rise to a ball of cells. The cells that begin to form groups that develop into different tissues and organs of the body. This developing structure is termed an embryo. The embryo gets embedded in the wall of the urtus for further development. The embryo continues to develop in the urtus. It gradually develops body parts such as hands, legs, heads, eyes, ears, etc. The stage of the embryo in which all the body parts can be identified is called a foetus. When the development of the foetus is complete, the mother gives birth to the baby. Internal fertilization takes place in hens also. But do hens give birth to babies like human beings and cows? You know that they do not gain. How are chicks born? Let us find out. Soon after fertilization, the zygote divides rapidly and travels down the oedic. As it travels down, many protective layers are formed around it. The hard shell that you see in a hen's egg is one such a protective layer. After the hard shell is formed around the developing embryo, the hen finally lays the eggs. The embryo takes about three weeks to develop into a chick. You must have seen the hen sitting on the egg to provide sufficient warmth. Did you know that development of the chick takes place inside the egg shell during this period? After this chick is completed, developed into breast, open the egg shell. In animals which undergo external fertilization, development of the embryo takes place outside the female body. The embryos continues to grow within their egg covering. After the embryo develops the egg hatch, you must have seen numerous tadpoles swimming in ponds and streams. Viviparous and oviparous animals. You have learned that some animals give birth to young ones while some animals lay eggs which later develops into young ones. The animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals. Those animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals. The following activity will help you understand better and differentiate between viviparous and oviparous animals. Activity 9.2 Try to observe eggs of the following organisms. Frog lizard, butterfly or moth, hen and crow or any other bird. Were you able to observe eggs of all of them, make drawing of the egg that you have observed. The eggs of a few animals are easy to observe because their mothers lay them outside their bodies. These are examples of oviparous animals, but you will not be able to collect the egg of a dog, cow or cat. This is because they do not lay egg. The mother gives birth to the young one. These are examples of viviparous animals. Can you now give some more examples of viviparous and oviparous animals? Young ones to adults. The new individuals which are born or hatched from the egg continue to grow till they become adults. In some animals, the young ones may look very different from the adults. Recall the life cycle of the silkworm you studied in class 7. Frog is another such example. Observe the different stages of frog starting from the egg to the adult stage. We find that there are three distinct stages, that is, egg, tadpole, adult. Don't the tadpoles look so different from the adults? Can you imagine that these tadpoles will someday become frogs? Similarly, the caterpillar or the pupa of silkworm looks very different from the adult moth. The features that are present in the adults are not found in these young ones. Then what happens to the tadpoles or caterpillars thereafter? You must have seen a beautiful moth emerging out of the cocoon. In the case of tadpoles, they transform into adults capable of jumping and swimming. The transformation of the lava into an adult through drastic changes is called metamorphosis. What about the changes that we observe in our body as you grow? Do you think we too undergo metamorphosis in human beings, baby? Body parts similarly to those present in the adults are present from the time of birth. 9.3 A Sexual Reproduction So far we have learnt about reproduction in some familiar animals. But what about very small animals like hydra and microscopic organisms like amoeba? Do you know how they reproduce? Let us find out. Activity 9.3 Get permanent slides of hydra 
observe them using hand lens or a microscope or look out for any bulges from the parent body count the number of bulges that you see in different slides also note the sizes of the bulges draw the diagram of hydra as you see it compare it with the fig 9.11 In each hydra there may be one or more bulges these bulges are the developing new individuals and they are called buds recall the presence of buds in yeast in hydra to the new individuals develop out as outgrowths from a single parent this type of reproduction in which only a single parent is involved is called a sexual reproduction since new individuals develop from the buds in hydra this type of a sexual reproduction is called budding another method of a sexual reproduction is observed in the microscopic organism amoeba let us see how this happens you have already learned about the structure of amoeba you will recall that amoeba is a single cell organism it begins the process of reproduction by the division of its nucleus into two nuclei this is followed by division of its body into two each part of receiving a nucleus finally two amoeba are produced from one parent amoeba this type of asexual reproduction in which an animal reproduces by dividing it into two individual is called binary fission apart from budding and binary fission there are other methods by which a single parent reproduces young ones you will study about this in your higher classes